zero. FEC three quarters, channel ID, guide US TV. You can also download the app to your available for iPhones from the App Store for Android on Google Play. And now Guide Us TV is available on Roku. Get guided with Guide Us. Here are some ways to get Guide Us TV via satellite on Galaxy 19 FTA. At this satellite frequency, transponder rate 5, frequency 11836 megahertz, polarity vertical, symbol rate 20770, FEC three quarters, channel ID, guide US TV. You can also download the app to your smartphone. Available for iPhones from the App Store for Android on Google Play. And now Guide Us TV is available on Roku. Get guided with Guide Us TV. And guys, we're coming to you almost live from our studios right here in Southern California. And I'm glad you tuned in because tonight we're going to pick up where we left off last night, talking about the hijab, the covering for women. But we're going to talk about it tonight a little bit different because we're going to talk about it from the Bible. What does the Bible say about uh, covering up the women? And uh, help us talk about all of this. We have somebody right now all the way from Anaheim. No, not Anaheim. That's where I'm at. Uh, Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Here's Richard. Somebody come, Richard. Walaikum salam, uh, Juma Mubarak. Juma Mubarak, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah, we could say uh, Juma Mubarak. That's uh, that's exactly right, because this is yes. a blessed day. Yom blessed Juma, day. the day of yes. gathering, gathering, gathering. This yes, is mentioned. That, that. Speaking of the Bible, it's mentioned about gathering in the Bible, about g gathering together and uh, worshiping. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you tonight? Tell us a little bit about what's going on there in Michigander. Well, we're doing okay. Um, we're rolling along and uh, vaccines are getting into arms of Michiganders and uh, we're doing really pretty good. And uh, we anticipate by, you know, um, the end of, actually by the end of March into April that, uh, you know, we'll be like at 50%. So uh, hopefully very quickly we'll get to, you know, the 70%, uh, whatever that they call the herd, the herd numbers herd or whatever. Immunity. And uh, always, I don't know if I like being part of a herd, but uh, we're uh, looking forward to, to that. People are coming around. Um, more people are uh, rolling up their sleeves and uh, the vaccines are becoming available not only to the health departments, uh, but to some of the local messages are now uh, providing vaccine as well, as well as pharmacies, um, supermarkets. Uh, the vaccine's kind of showing up everywhere. Um, there's a large uh, supermarket chain in Michigan that um, it's uh, it's in there now as well. So what, people are able to the call. Make an what is the name of the supermarket chain? It's called Meyer. How did M e i j e r? It oh yes, it. yeah, Meyer. Yeah, the, yeah, the J yeah. is kind of like a almost like a silent H. It is yes. Began in the Grand Rapids area many, many years ago, and uh, they're huge. It's a big box supermarket, clothing, hardware, toys, garden, everything. And uh, they're very popular, and people are finding them there. Um, so hopefully, as more of the virus uh, vaccine comes rolling out of wherever it comes rolling from, that uh, people will start to... Uh, Put aside some of their fears and understand the necessity of being uh, uh, vaccinated. It was kind of nice to go out today because I've had my two shots and my two weeks since my last shot. And so without being reckless, it was kind of nice to go to the masjid and going, I'm pretty safe here. 
and uh, that was very now is it required still for for you as somebody who's totally you've been through everything you had both shots you had your waiting period uh, is it okay for you to take off the mask or no you must no. still no 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 we still can't take off our mask because uh even though i'm safe i could be caring and uh so i got I, we're still everybody's masking everybody's staying six feet apart and uh, when the uh, uh, Juma prayer is done, everybody pulls up their own rug that they have purchased, bought with them, and everybody leaves. It's like there's no, in, in olden days, it was hang around and talk, and nah, it's out the door. Uh, everybody's outside. There's some gatherings outside to talk, but uh, not inside. Everybody leaves. But uh, we're very safe. The bathrooms are closed. So uh, the restrooms, so you have to do wudu before you get there and uh, somewhere else. But uh, all's good. It's good to be together. So, okay. uh, so, so what you're saying that we're still going to be wearing the masks for a while. Yeah, I betcha. I betcha. President Biden last night talked about uh, maybe we could be without a mask around certain people by the 4th of July. 4th of July. Oh, wow. Well, it's yep. a good thing that we have these Guidus TV masks. And guys, you can get one if you join us. You'd like to be a Dawa partner with us. We have these Dawa, that, because the, it, the Dawa, the call to Islam is on everything we've got. I don't know. If you, can you see that? Yeah. Uh, there, yes. there it is. Yeah, it says Guidus TV. It's very small on there. It's not very uh, intrusive, but the nice thing about it is that these are these are not the N95. I want everybody to know that these are not the real expensive ones. However, they are very good. There's a filter that we have that we put inside of here, and you're supposed to do that. Then this goes over your nose like that, and then this has these little tags. I don't know if. It, let me turn another light on here. Okay, so you can yeah, see yeah, this yeah. little thing right here. All right, you can pull that off. I already pulled the one off over here. So it actually starts out that a child can wear it, a mm -hmm. small person, and then a, a big fat guy like me can just go like that and yeah. And here's the nice thing about it. This has a, a small wire inside of it so that it conforms to the nose, all right? And what's cool about that, if you get it, if you get it just right, then your glasses don't fog up. Mm. <sighs> now, if I, if I have a air coming out of here, <sighs> you can see it, it will come up. Oh, all know. right, all right. I need, I need a guide this TV thing on here. Oh, you got it. No sweat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's over on the right side of the thing, and we'll, yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll get you one out there. Yeah, these so, ones, we do have the adjustable. Yeah. And by the so way, that, did you join nice. our Dawa team yet? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yes, okay. Yes, support guide TV. Yes. Okay, all right, guys, we'll talk about that later in the program. Let's get uh, on with our program. We're already eight minutes into the program. We didn't even touch our topic. We were talking mm -hmm. about the hijab. This is a covering. It's understood the hijab is worn by the women. We talked about the verse in the Quran talking about how she brings that veil down over her head, and this is... Uh, uh, I wanted to kind of remind everybody a little bit about this before we get into what the Bible says about it, but I'd like for guys to just just take a chance to look at this. I'm going to put it up here on the screen right now so that you guys can see. Uh, just put in the H-I-J-A-B, all right? If you do that, I, I want to tell you what will happen. Uh, well, you got to go to Google first. I forgot to go to Google. All right. Now, on regular Google, let me show you what that looks like. I think everybody knows what Google looks like, all right? I don't mind giving them a free plug because the, I have used Google ever since it came out, 
and uh, yeah a as a matter of fact they ha they operate a lot of stuff for us with no charge for instance shakegoogle.com that's our invention and they allow us to use as long as we don't do any advertising they allow us to use that for our uh, search engine all right so now I want you to go on Google anytime you want to. You don't have to go to our website. You just go to any web, uh, uh, any browser that you have, and then open up the Google. All right. Then, whenever you do that, type in the word H I J A B. All right. And whenever you do that, these are the images that are going to pop up. Now, what's really interesting about this is that this is uh, a, it's actually a pretty decent representation here of the, it, it's not perfect, all right, okay, but it's so much better than it was, just say, for instance, 10 years ago, because whenever we saw stuff on there, it was a nightmare. Anyway. So you can see these images, and these are all licensed by Google anyway. They, they pay for this. So don't get the idea that they just put that up randomly. They paid for that. Uh, okay, and then notice what the, 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 they, they have questions here. Let me see if I can center that up. Yeah. It says, uh, it's the religious code which governs the wearing of hijab all right then it goes on to say people also ask what's the purpose of wearing hijab all right that's a good question what's the difference between burqa and hijab you know the the burqa is something that they the women were wearing this in afghanistan i don't know if you remember you'd see them in their blue outfits and they and they have a mask over their face and all of the rest of it and uh yeah that's burqa and then is it mandatory for the women to wear the hijab is it haram not to wear the hijab all of these questions uh, guys this is on google this is not our google <laughs> that is the real google out there all right and you can find these answers, and they are answered by people that have the evidence to support what they're saying. And there is actually some people out there telling us that some individuals, Muslims, have violated some laws of the country and violated laws of Islam by insisting the women do something that is not there. So, yeah, I, I really feel that the internet is coming around to something a little bit more balanced. I hope. I hope that's true. I hope it's not me getting imbalanced and then I'm looking at everything like, you know, oh, let's level now. <laughs> I, hope, I hope I'm not doing that. All right. But now what I'd like for you to do, guys, is I'm going to switch this over to our website okay and it's called shake google now shake here is just h s h e i k no h after that all right and then whenever you do this it's supposed to go to us huh well all right I'll put a dot com with it, and that ought to do it. There we go. It's still weird. There we go. There's a lot of people talking about our website, I guess. <laughs> That's kind of good. Even if they're talking bad about us, it's free advertising, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it makes sense to me. What do you think? Word of mouth, take advantage of it. There you go. Even even if it's uh, the mouth is uh, <laughs> attached to the wrong person or uh, anyway. Uh, so anyway, now it says, okay, shake 
uh, Google. Uh, now, let's let's get it up here the right way. What the heck? It says that our content's not available. Come on, man. There we go. There we go. Anyway, so there it is. Searchforslam.com, also known as shaygoogle.com. All right. Now, type in hijab here. H-I-J-A-B. Hijab. Now, watch what happens. So you get all of this stuff is popping up here. The suppression of liberation. Ah, what about that? Modern hijab or no? So what we will do, first of all, is I would like to encourage you to check out this first one. Suppression uh, or of liberation or what? So this goes right straight to our website called Islam's Women, and it does talk about the hijab right here. All right? So, islamswomen.com, and talking about the hijab, and it we also have exactly the same thing that Google does, and what we endeavored to do was to put this up a long time ago, and it looks like it worked because now... Other people are using our efforts and distributing the real truth of Islam. So that's that's cool if you stop and think about it. So look at this right now. Take a look, okay? You will see that we put these same questions up 12, uh, 14 years ago. 14 years ago when we started this particular one. And that, that says, what is hijab? That's the first one over on the left side. Virtues of hijab, we worded it different. Obligations of jihad. The face veil, do you have to wear that? What about the one who won't wear the hijab? And each one of these has a discussion on it. All right? One is from Dr. Bilal Phillips. Another one mm. is from Dr. Zachar Nike. Another one is from yours truly. And all of this, and then even here's something I think is really cool. One of our volunteer sisters, she put up this right here. Look over on the left side, and you can watch the tutorial about it. You said obligation of jihad. I did I? Hijab. I did, I, <laughs> did I say? Are you serious? <laughs> Okay, bleep. <laughs> we got to go back and erase that. <laughs> obligation of jihad. No, I said obligation of hijab. Uh, that's what I was supposed to say. Anyway, sometimes, uh, you know, I just got these new teeth, and uh, sometimes my tongue gets tangled up uh, around it, and I can't see what I'm saying. You know, the eye teeth can't see. Never mind. Anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, so... Yeah, the tutorial about this hijab over here on this left side of the page. Okay, you see it blinking? Okay. So click on that, and this will tell you how you're supposed to wear the hijab. So this is one of our sisters put this together for us. I'm not going to uh, go into that in detail right now. You can go to the website and find out all about that. The beautiful part about it is I'm showing you that after years of putting our, it's now 4,200 websites for Islam. Mm -hmm. And it's paying off because worldwide people are getting the information. I don't care if they give me the credit for it. I, that, I need a law to give me that. If I lie, except even one word, even one period that I put up there, I'm good to go. I don't care. But, uh, you know, we want to keep this free and I want to keep it out there for everybody to see it with no ads. I, I, guys, I'm going to take a break here for a second. I'm going to ask you a question. When you go to YouTube, just be honest, or you go to YouTube and you're watching a video and all of a sudden in the middle of this where you're really interested, 
And now, here's Happy Harry's used car lot selling you cars. Or, hey, here's this organization, and you need to donate for it, and blah, 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 blah. And you can't get rid of it until you just sit there and wait and wait. Okay. And then they put up that little thing. Would you like to skip it? Yes, I would like to skip all of that. Anyway, so that's why we didn't do it from the very beginning. They, we did not want two things. Number one, we didn't want people interrupting the message. Yeah, number two, we didn't want other people telling us how to present Islam. Well, don't say that's haram, brother, because, you know, we, we, you know, there's some gray areas here and blah, 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 because they're selling it. Okay? Not the least of which is the so-called halal finance, right? And there is, there is halal financing out there, but it's a, a subject for another time. We'll get some of the people who are in that business who can talk about it from a logical point of view and show you what's the difference between mm -hmm. halal and haram and that. Okay, anyway, Richard, are you ready to talk about the Bible and what it says about all of this? <laughs> oh, about, about women and coverings? Yeah, the Bible. Yeah, I think. Yes, uh, yes indeed. Uh, let, me, let me read a passage of scripture that I'm going to kind of give my own side on this here in, in 1 Corinthians 11. Paul, the uh, self-proclaimed apostle, wrote. Okay, now, um, wait a minute. Now, you said self-proclaimed. Uh, now, you know, I know he was Saul, and he was working for the Sanhedrin, and he was amongst the Pharisees for a bit, and uh, he actually was taking letters that gave him permission from the Pharisees to go out and kill all the Christians and, and give them a hard time. And he was uh, very much on his way to go do that in, in to Damascus. He was on his road, uh, on the road to D Damascus, Syria, and uh, and along the way, he said he had a vision, and he talked about it. And then in the same book, this is in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. He, in the first time he talked about it, he said nobody saw it or anything except him. Nobody heard anything or saw anything but him. And then he was blind. But then the next time he talked about it, no, he said everybody was hearing it. And then in the third time he talked about it, he wasn't blind anymore. But, uh, and everybody fell down and heard it and saw it. And uh, yeah, so this is the Paul you're talking about. He used to be called Saul and they switched his name around, right? That's it. That's it. Did I miss the author, anything? Two uh, thirds of the New Testament. And, uh, uh, yeah, there's a lot of ways that he does not qualify according to uh, the Bible as far as the qualifications to be an apostle. All right. Uh, Tell us so, what it says in the Bible according to Paul. What does he say about this? Well, according to Paul in 1 Corinthians, um, uh, let me start here. 1 Corinthians 11, we'll start at uh, 14, not nah, 13. Judging yourselves, it is comely. Is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. Can't keep that. But if a man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the church of God. All right. This is fascinating. So it's kind of like a woman should not pray without her, without being covered. But then he says, well, your hair is kind of the covering. Um, and men shouldn't have long hair. But if you're going to argue about it, it doesn't matter. That's kind of what he's what he's saying up there in verse sixteen. If any man seems to be contentious, we don't have a custom. All right. So so that's the that. By the way, guys, I, I want you to if you don't know what the Bible is all about, let me tell you what. 
The Bible is different Bibles to different groups. Yes. The, the so-called Catholic or Universal Church of Rome had its own Bible for many, many centuries. And it was very much a precursor to the Bible that people have today. That Bible had 73 books in it, all right? At the time of the breakup where the Protestants were protesting against the church, they broke off and then invented their own Bible and took out things that they didn't like and put in things that they did like, all right? And that is the Bible that we know today as the authorized Bible or the, the William Tyndale Bible and also known as the uh, later, a hundred years later, the King James Version of the Bible. Okay, just FYI, just giving you a little update. So that is the book that most of the Christians today think it's the only Bible, but that's not the case. Mm -hmm. the, the real Bible, according to the Orthodox Church, has 78 books in it. And they're saying that the Catholic Bible is already trimmed down five of the books. All right. But then you get to the Protestant or Protesters Bible, and it only has 66 books. And uh, I don't know if another millennium passes by or not but if it does maybe they'll have an express bible that you can just you know you know read on your phone in in 15 minutes the whole bible basically hey god doesn't want you to do bad stuff do good stuff hey yeah, good all right there you go oh and don't forget somebody died for your sins so it doesn't matter anyway there you go there you go the reader's digest version <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, biblical. No, I won't even go there. Just yeah. Um, well, you spent forty-three years as a pastor of the Baptist Church, and I I always emphasize that to the people because I, I don't know how many new people are watching us right now. Maybe maybe they don't know that you are very much. I mean, I look up to you as my expert because uh, you. No, seriously, because you really dedicated so much of your life to this thing. I mean, you know, I was a, a part-time musician and full-time seller of the pianos and organs to the churches. So, you know, let's, let's call it like it is. You, however, have dedicated your life to religion, to God. And for that reason, maybe that's why God guided you to Islam. And I, I think God... I think God I'm has a that. sense of humor because he brought me into Islam too anyway, but then he, you know. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that today when we were in the, in the Juma prayer and I was like, ah, Allah, I'm so glad to be here um, and to be able to worship the one God. Would and, you like uh, to know how to say that in Arabic? It's Alhamdulillah, Allah Ja'alna Muslimin. That means okay. all the praise to the one who made us Muslims. Alhamdulillah, yeah. you already know that. Ja, uh, Allah, 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 Allah means to the one. Allah Ja'alna made he made us Muslimin. Alhamdulillah, Allah Ja'alna Muslimin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I memorized the cool Allah had. Uh, Surah Iklas, and uh, yes, there's one, and uh, no, it's it's a grateful heart that springs for me because of uh, the confusion, uh, just like this whole thing with with the Apostle Paul. Uh, here's a book, and um, you know, for most of my years, it was the King James Schofield Reference Bible, and. Uh, and yet within Christianity, there's thousands of versions of Christianity, depending on the way different people looked at this book. Uh, some people look at it and go, um, I do this and I get to go to heaven. Other people say, no, you gotta do this and this, go to heaven. And uh, on and on and on it goes. 
and the book, the, the manuscripts have changed and we don't have, they're there to agree. And even like the Apostle Paul, the, the, the passage in Acts where it says those that are qualifying as, um, as apostles needed to see Jesus and be part of his ministry, peace be upon him, and be called by him. And Paul kind of uses a techno, you know, little technical kind of thing, saying, "Well, I saw the light, and and that was it." Uh, but there's there's just so, you know, I I just encourage any any Christians that are watching you know tonight here just to take a couple steps back and look at some of the uh, the problems that, that something like that happens uh, with people. You know, like, you know, I've got a King James Bible, but there's 450 other versions. We've got the New International. We've got the Amplified Bible. We've got the Good News for Modern Man. Uh, the, the, I don't know if there's a bad news for old men. I don't know. It, it, there's just so many versions. There's a denomination of Lutherans that don't like any of them, so they're writing their own. Wow. So well, do you mind if I, I take a moment just to, for a short break, and then when we come back, I, I can show them a website that's for the Christians that lists some of the many Bibles and the differences between them. And, and, yeah. and can we do that? I'll just take oh, a short break. Yeah. All right. So, guys, I, I want you to sit back, relax, and watch this coming up right now. And let me put the one up that's the shortest one so you won't have to endure too much. Here we go. Stay tuned. Stay guided with Guidance TV. Worship the creator, not the creation. That's what Guidance TV is all about. And now we have the new app, guideus.app. Download the app and it will take up no space on your device. Works on all devices, all phones, all tablets, all computers, anywhere there's internet, it works. Mm. And there's more. If you want to know who that creator is, if you want to share the message of worship the creator, not the creation, you can just as easily tell anybody anywhere, download the app. Just go to the browser, type in the word guide us dot app. Simple. Install it. And no ads, no spam, no commercials, no space on your device. Ah, win, win, win. All the way around. And if you want to know more about that creator, let me tell you, it's like a pen. A pen. A simple pen. That's the story. Mm -hmm. If you have a pen and I ask you to borrow it and I'm writing something and you say, wait a minute, I don't want to leave this guy because he's got my pen. And when I get done, I put it all back together. I hand it to you and you walk off. All right. You got that? But what would happen if this pen didn't write anymore? You throw it away. Why? Because it doesn't do its purpose. What is its purpose? To write. If it doesn't write, who needs a pen that doesn't write? Ah, and that is the message of our purpose in life with our Creator. He said in the Quran, in Surah Al-Dariyat, chapter 55, verse 56, very clear that he only created the human beings in the jinn for one purpose. Okay, now say it. <laughs> we're back. Yeah, that, yes, we are. We are back. And it's good to see your back. And it's good to see your front. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, actually, the back looks better. <laughs> Oh, All right, yeah. guys, we were back. I, I wanted to show you something in the Bible. I opened up the Bible while you were watching that uh, hopefully interesting uh, little thing that we put up. But anyway, 
So let's go to the Bible right now. This is Bible Gateway. Bible Gateway has done an amazing job putting these different Bibles up there and they made it real easy for people to go through and I've used it to reference things of the Bible. Muslims are compelled by Almighty God to believe in the original works that were sent down to the previous prophets. So we have no problem in be believing in what the prophets said and what they did and what they brought for their people. We have, that is not our discussion. If anybody wants to debate about the Bible, I'm the first one to say I can prove there was a Bible because in the Quran it says there was, okay? And then mm -hmm. we can talk about the proof of the Quran itself, all right? So we absolutely believe in the original Bible, but not translations. Well, I'm not obligated to accept all these translations. However, it's interesting to read them like this. Watch. This is BibleGateway.com. And by the way, pray for them because uh, we should pray for people and ask a lot to guide them. Yeah. So uh, Corinthians 1.11 Okay, this is Corinthians 1.11. We were just hearing about the Corinthians just a minute ago. And this is KJ21. All right, and this is how it reads this verse. It's how they translate this verse right here. I highlighted it so you could see it. Then the ASV Bible translates it like this. And the AMP Bible translates it like this. The AMPC Bible trace it, translates it like this. The BRG, the CSB, the CEB, the CJB, the CEB, the Darby Bible. Hey, let's slow up right here and let's take a look at the Darby Bible. For it has been shown to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of the house of Chloe, that there are strifes among you. All right? And pretty much that's what they all say, uh, almost, until you get down here. It's just a wording thing, all right? Until you get to the EXB Bible. My brothers and sisters, some people from Chloe's family. family. And then it goes on to say, uh, this could be family members, servants, business agents, have told me quite plainly, reported to me, that there are quarrels, conflicts, rivalries, rivalry, rivalries. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm doing the best I can with what I got to work with here, okay? All right. Then now it goes back in again and says, For it hath been declared unto me, my brethren, of you, by them that are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions. Well, at least it's not rivalries and conflicts anymore. And then the next one in the GW. Brothers and sisters, some people from Chloe's family have made it clear to me that you're quarreling among yourselves. Okay, it's pretty much the same thing. And then the GNT says, For some people from Chloe's family have told me quite plainly, my friends, that there are quarrels among you. Okay, so we're at contentions and quarrels. And now the HCSB, then the ICB. I'm not going to read all these to you. ISB. But look at the Phillips Bible. All of a sudden, somebody took one sentence and turned it into a paragraph. Now I do beg you. Well, I didn't even know anything about the begging here. My brothers, not, not mentioning the sisters at all, huh? By all that Christ means to you to speak with one voice. I didn't, we didn't see that in any other uh, translation, did we? And not allow yourself to be split up into parties. Well, that's what Islam teaches us too. Well, la ta particle. Don't separate yourself. That's nice. Altogether, you should be achieving a unity in thought and judgment. For I know from what some of Chloe's people have told me that you are at each other making different claims. I am one of Paul's men, says one. I am one of Apollo's. That's the word 
uh, if you're familiar with the old uh, Roman language, the Latin, Apollos is the what the word Paul is built on. So Paul changed his name from Saul, which is Jewish, to Apollo or Paul, yeah, which is Roman. And then he said, then it goes on, it says, I am one of Cephas, while well, someone else says, I owe my faith to Christ alone. Now, that's very interesting that you can get all of that out of, and then we go right back to the Jew, you be, for it has been declared to me, unto me, my brethren and those of the house of Chloe, that there are contingents among you. And now finally the KJV, that is the King James Version. That's, these All these letters stand for the name of different Bibles. For it hath been declared unto me, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Why in the world would I accept that huge long paragraph when I can get away with just taking this little thing here and run with it? Except that maybe I'm leaving something out. Now in the MSG, well, look at this. I bring this up because some of the Chloe's family brought a most disturbing report to my attention. Huh. That they're fighting amongst themselves. I'll tell you exactly what I was told. We didn't even know this. That nobody said exactly what was told. Uh, you are all picking sides and going on saying, I'm on Paul's side, or I'm for Apollos, or Peter is my man, or I'm in the Messiah group. It sounds like political arguments here, guys. Uh, no, Trump, no, Biden, no, we need uh, uh, Bernie Sanders. What the heck? is This is the Bible? Really? I don't know. What, what's your take on any of this? Uh, well, here's the problem. And, and the, the problem is reaching right down today to the young generation of American Christians. Uh, because when I grew up, uh, we didn't have Google. Um, if we wanted to look up something, we had to go to the library or, or somewhere. And so when the minister got up and said, this Bible is the inerrant, inspired, perfect word of God, we all sat in the pew and went, okay, you say so. You're the, you're the trained man. And now uh, the pastor can get up and say the same thing, but you can go on Google and, or just like you did there on, on Bible Gateway or Bible Hub or one of those and just go, oh, but it's different and different and different here. And then you start to look down through all the different denominations and you've got different viewpoints all coming out of people looking at one book. Out of the Bible comes 30,000 different views. Um, and the young people are just going, that doesn't make any sense. Um, you're saying this is the, the inspired, inerrant. Uh, the, the theological termination was the verbal plenary. Basically every dot, every tittle was perfect. And, uh, and we have it. And, you know, with a few Google uh, swipes and clicks, you can realize that the manuscripts are, are diverse and variances uh, and just not small a, ones. Just ones. on this Bible Gateway thing, uh, I'd yeah. like to go back to that if I could and just sure. give, give you guys a, a, an idea. The Bible Gateway is a Christian organization and they're trying to help Christians to get a better understanding of what the Bibles have collectively to get the points across, okay? And I, I appreciate that because my dad and I used to do the same thing. However, it, it never dawned on me before, but take a look, guys. I, I want you to really take a, take a quick look at this. Take a look. This is Bible Gateway listing out 60. 60 of the translations, starting with the KJ21 ASV, and then in alphabetical order. These are their abbreviations for them, like uh, the Good News for Modern Man and the uh, Phillips Bible, the Darby Bible, 
the, uh, let's see, Revised Standard Version, the New Revised Standard Version, um, the King James Version of the Bible, and so on. And then it goes all the way down to number 60. And this is not all of them. This is the Christian Bibles. We're just talking only about the Christian Bibles. Uh, 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 sorry, the Protestant Bibles. Protestant, yes. I should yes. be clear, because the uh, Roman Orthodox Church, they don't accept that. They have their own Bible. And uh, let's don't forget about the, or the Orthodox, the Greek Orthodox, and the Russian Orthodox, they have their own Bibles as well. It's not just about being in another language. It's about different verses, different books, and so on. So bottom line, which one are you going to grab onto? Now, I like the idea when somebody says, hey, I'm not worried about the Bible. I do believe in God. I, I love that. Because that's what me and my dad used to say, too. It's not about the Bible translated. My father used to say that to us when we were little kids. And when he was a little kid, he read the whole entire Bible, the King James ver Version, uh, when he was 10 years old, all the way through. All the way. 1927, he read it all the way through, and he got an award for, for doing that. Now, the point that I'm uh, trying to make here is that we do have something that is testable evidence from Almighty God. And now maybe you don't like Muslims, maybe you don't care about Islam, but let me just ask you in plain English, do you believe in God? Yes, all right. Do you want to do what God wants you to do? Yes, all right. Do you want to sur surrender to God? and let his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And you say, yes, that's what I want. Okay, Jesus told us that. Yes, he did. I agree. There's no problem with that. But if I told you that in the Arabic language, you just said, I want to be a Muslim. I want to follow Islam. You'd be like, no, no, no. Because you've been brainwashed by the media to think only negative things about any of the... Uh, suppose somebody said, praise God, praise God, praise God. Ah, oh, that's nice. God is the greatest. God is the greatest. Nothing greater than God. All right. Now, now if he said it in Arabic, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Oh, lock this guy up, man. He's, he's chanting some kind of weird stuff. That's the exact translation, except in Arabic, it's much more beautiful because it's clear. These are the Semitic languages, Arabic, Aramaic, Hebrew, Eber, all of these are related. And that's the languages of the so-called books coming down from Almighty God. Oops, all right. Well, even back to, we were talking about Paul the Apostle, even within the Bible itself. Uh, for example, uh, when Paul was on the road to Damascus, he saw a light and heard a voice. Uh, did everybody around him, those friends, did they hear the voice too? Acts 9 says yes. Acts 22 says no. Uh, there's, you know, on, there's, within itself there are problems. Um, uh, did the, command, the companions, did they fall to the ground? In Acts 26, it says yes. In Acts 9, it says nope, they didn't fall. Uh, did the voice spell out on the spot what Paul's duties were to be? Acts 26, yeah. Acts 9, no. Uh, so the, you just read just within the, the context of Acts and the story of, of, of Paul's conversion, and you, you, you've got a mismatch of, of facts and information and even within Christianity, we have taken, and because Paul, it says he saw a light, and everybody goes, oh, he saw Jesus, peace be upon him. No, it just said he saw a light. And so we just try to read, you look at the Bible and you try to read into it what you want it to say, and uh, that can lead you down, down a very slippery path. 
And, um, you know, I've read the Bible. I spent years and years studying. Uh, but to pick up the, the Quran and to read that alongside is, it's like, yes, this is the message. This is the clear message of God. And this is uh, kind of the clarity and clarifying uh, that is, is very, very obvious, even as you read it. Uh, there's no this kind of did he or didn't he not some yes say no um you know it's like even when jesus peace be upon him went into jerusalem on what they call palm sunday uh you know one book says he rode in on a on a colt the other one says he rode in on a colt and a donkey so it's well that, now that we've been uh, you and i have been talking for the last few minutes about the subject of versions of the bible yeah. So you have studied the Bible, I think, in the Greek language as well as Hebrew. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so you are familiar with the characters of the Greek, and you're familiar with the alphabet of the Hebrew Hebrew language. Is that true? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. So in your experience, have you come across a original Bible, which is at, from the time of Jesus or even from his followers that you could say, oh, okay, there is the complete Bible right there. Is that is that possible? Not, not in existence. Does not exist. We have copies of copies of copies of copies of copies of varying manuscripts 5,700 some collected New Testament manuscripts that don't agree with one another. All right. Well, okay. Yeah. Let's, let's ask another question. Have you ever seen at least one book, not the whole Bible, not the 66 or 73 or 78 books. I'm just asking any one of the books that can be date, put back at the dating of the time of Jesus or his companions that were alive during his time? No. No, we have nothing like that. Nothing goes back that far. Okay, now I'm going to ask another question. Let me, let me put it this way. The way that the Jews used to, the children of Israel, the way they used to uh, take the words from Abraham and Moses they would memorize them because not very many people, even up until I was born, not a lot of them, the vast majority of the people didn't really read. They knew some letters and some words, but they right. didn't read or write. And th that was even more so true back 5,000 years oh. ago. All right. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So what they would do, they could listen and memorize. People had tremendous memories. They, they had memories that, uh, that would yeah. compete with the memories of our computers today. And they would memorize all this stuff. And then they, when they'd have Jubilee, they would bring out, they would bury the scrolls and then dig them up later uh, on Jubilee. And then somebody would hold these scrolls that knew how to read and then listen to what was being recited around them and match it up. Good to go. And that's the, the tradition. Is, is that what you learned? Yes, yes. Uh, it was a, a lot of verbal traditions and passing along and memorizing. Um, but again, you know, you're talking about ancient well, no, times. Wait, 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 wait. I, I want to I jump up to, uh, I don't want you to contest your own answer. <laughs> I, I, want, I want to go step by step for our viewers because somebody's watching this right now that's not a Muslim and saying, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Okay, so that tradition of memorizing and repeating, this is what we do with the Quran. Is that true? Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. The, uh, word for word, for word, for word, everything from the Quran is exactly the, if I mess up, somebody's going to correct me if I'm reciting. Is that true? Yes, they will. All right. So can we look for something like this in the way of the Bible? Do the Jews, the children of Israel, they, do they still recite this and present it out there letter for letter, word for word, so that we could say, okay, we do have that, at least the Old Testament? Well, yes. I mean, obviously within the Jewish tradition, 
uh, the Torah is uh, is recited and, uh, and read that way. Okay, so we do have something that we can uh, relate to. Is it authentic or does it have some kind of problems? Um, you know, I am not as familiar with the uh, the manuscripts. Um, okay, then in this uh, case, that, I'm I, gonna I have to, be, I'll, I'll have to just, answer my own question. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and answer. I just I just got this book. I don't want to have to put a cover on it, but uh, this is I am digging into that very thing, the authentication of of the Old Testament and right. uh, the Torah. So to, uh, uh, okay, so if it's a book from God. If it's a book from God, uh, and he's the one that actually is sending it down, it should be first person. I am, I did, and I will. And But when it starts saying, God did this and that, and according to so-and-so, God did such and such. So I, I, I want to understand what it is that's being recited. And can I count on it to actually be authoritative from Almighty God? Because if that's the case, that's that's what we are called to believe as Muslims. It's Siddhalakal Kitabul Arabafi. This is the book wherein there is no doubt in it. Hudilamutakin. This is the guidance for those who are the true believers. Aladina Yukminunabil Vaib, they believe in the unseen. Well, you came with Allah, and they established the worship with Allah. And th then it goes on to tell us that we have to believe in what is being sent down to Muhammad and what was sent before him in public. And subhanAllah, I, if we find this, I'm ready. But the problem that I have, I have read the Dead Sea Scrolls translated. I have read the translations of the Old Testament, and I found that there are huge discrepancies de depending on if you have this Bible or that Bible, and they are not all one. But by the way, and now I want to come to something real simple. If all of these Bibles, or any one of them, any part of it, is from God, shouldn't God know who he is? And shouldn't God tell us who he is? Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. All right. Is there you know, any book is there any book in the Old Testament that doesn't really talk about God? Okay, I'm not I'm, I'm not sure where you're headed. All right. There is one book in the Old Testament that has no mention of God on any page. And we're going to have to come back on this. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's okay, called yeah, Samson and Delilah. Hmm. No mention. All right. So that's it. We got to wrap it up, guys. Oh, You've been watching Guidus TV coming to you almost live all the way from our studios right here in Southern California. And also in A not Anaheim. Remind me. No, no Mickey Mouse here. Yeah, no Mickey Mouse there. Yeah. Ann Arbor, Michigan. Yes. All right. Yeah. So everybody stay tuned. Stay guided with... Guide Us TV. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All oh, right. really? That, it's not letting me hook up. Oh, come on. There we go. Can you imagine it's our 10th anniversary? Guide Us TV on the air for 10 years already. Wow. And we want to keep going and growing. And how you can do that? Join us. Be part of what we are doing with Recite on TV, Bridge to Faith, Simple Reminders with Abu Hafsa, all of these great programs and more coming to you 24 hours a day. No commercials, no advertising, just pure Islam with Quran every hour with reminders throughout the day. What?
to many people of faith and no faith, blindly following the words 